the convergence plots. Um, you know that any numerical method, any numerical scheme that we're interested in um, should have this feature that, that it converges to the, to the correct solution. Um, and we are using the convergence plots to, we use convergence plots to, to see if that pre really happens and how quickly the schemes converge. I mean, how quickly in terms of how quickly the numerical solution approaches the correct solution when, when the discretization is, uh, when the space discretization or, or the time step is, is minimized um, and is refined. So, whenever you implement a numerical method and you want to test it rigorously, then I think you should, you should really generate plots of this kind that you plot with respect to age, basically the spatial discretization or the time step size. If you're interested in, in the temporal discretization, you should plot the error, some kind of error norm that is, that exists between the, as, that, that is, that exists between the correct solution and the numerical solution that you, that you get. Uh, usually for a good method, this, this error plot which looks somewhere, something, would look like that. Basically, it's said that epsilon maybe should not be equal to, but should not be larger, larger than some constant c times h to the power of p. What's what? This one is the error norm. Actually, any valid mathematical norm that you can select. Uh, this one is the um, is something that characterizes your discretization, let it be time discretization or space discretization. And this one, the exponent is called method order. That's probably something that you already know as well. Uh, if you've got the method of the first order, this means that if you decrease the, if you refine your discretization twice, then the error sh should drop also by a factor of two. If you've got, uh, if you've got a second order method, if you refine the discretization by a factor of two, your error should drop by a factor of four. Um, what kind of norms can you use? Basically, epsilon can be defined, for example, as the, as the maximum norm. Let's assume that this one is the numerical solution. And this one is the correct solution. Um, the maximum norm for the partial differential equation means, okay, maybe not for the partial differential equation, but numerically, when you already solve the problem and you've got the, disc you've got the representation of, the, of your numerical solution at all the nodes of your mesh. So the maximum norm is, in this case, actually nothing else numerically as going through all the nodes, checking what kind of value you've got at each node, what's the correct analytical solution at that node, and looking for the maximum difference. Well, mathematically, you should be looking everywhere between the points also, but it's probably more difficult to do in the, um, in the numerical code. Mm. That's one of the possibilities. 
the other possibilities is taking the L2 norm and the L2 norm uh, can be written like this L2 norm of something is calculated as the square root of the integral of the whole domain from that function to the power of 2 integrated of the, the whole domain. So basically what you are taking, if you're interested in the uh, L2 norm of the error, you take the, you generate the field of the numerical solution minus the analytical solution. So you've got the error, error distribution on your mesh. You, you take this, uh, you, you calculate the square of the error integrate of the, the whole domain, and then you take, uh, take the square root of the integral value. Hmm? What do we use for the correct uh, solution? The correct solution. <laughs> um, Shouldn't this be divided by the node, like the size of the domain? Should, mm, should be. I do not remember. How is it in the norm definition? Is it? I think in the norm it's it's not. Uh, but I think it's divided by the uh, norm of the uh, omega. I know you, you, what you mean. I I don't remember. I think the definition of the norm is that you do not divide by anything. Uh, if you're interested in some average error, yes, you'd like to, to divide it by the surface area of your, of your domain, a 2D domain, or volume of the 3D domain. That's true. But, but even if you don't do that, it's not a big deal, because see, you, you would be monitoring the drop of the error on probably some well-chosen test case. So. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what kind of what do you take for the correct solution? As I said, usually you take the cor correct solution. So it's nice to have the analytical solution uh, to to compare against. Um, the problem is that in some cases you can test your codes using the analytical solution, and that's fine. Uh, if you cannot, uh, very very often in in practice a trick is made that you that you really compute your case on many, many different grids and you, and you take the finest one and you assume it's the correct solution, although it's not. Uh, but this allows you to, to generate such a plot and see, see what the method order is. And that's already something. Uh, you're, you, you will implement methods of different orders, like first order is rather bad, second order is already something. Uh, it's not a high order method. Uh, if you're with the order below one, that's really good, but what you're most interested in is, is the error really under the control of the, uh, of the refinement of the discretization? Because if it involves some constant parameter, it means that even if you go with the discretization down to zero, you will not convert to the correct solution, and this means your scheme is not a valid scheme. So you're most, most interested in seeing whether it drops monotonically when you're decreasing the time step size or the um, space discretization step. Mm. Very, very often, and I would say in most cases, these plots are, uh, are plotted differently. Usually, you take the logarithm of the, of the discretization um, step, and you take the logarithm of the error, and what you would see in such a case 
you'd, you should end up with a linear relation in the double logarithmic plots. Um, and the nice thing is, the nice thing is that, that then the slope on the plot shows you exactly the, the order of the method. Like if you got two points, let's say this one is for zero, zero, one, this one is for zero, one, and you get, let's say, the that error, and you get that error, you got slope of one, and um, so the method order is certainly one. If you got, let's say, if you've got such a plot, this clearly shows that here one order of magnitude difference, here two orders of magnitude difference, P is equal to the, the method of, methods order is, is it the method of, of the second order? 